YouTube. We back with the video as we promised. Here reviewing the uh Apple Vision Pro. You know the big head see if it's in here right away. We looking at it. We're gonna review it, see if you want to buy it. 3400. Would you spend that on these? We got a guy gonna tell us all about it, man. Let's get to it. All right, so you've seen the unboxing. Now it's time for the breakdown. What is using the Apple Vision Pro actually like? This is easily one of Apple's craziest, most radical, possibly dystopian products of all time. And I have a lot of thoughts here. Like I've been using it for about a week now. There are some parts of this thing that are absolutely incredible and some other parts that feel weird or borderline unfinished. There are all kinds of new technologies from a new operating system to infrared eye tracking to virtually reconstructed like his eyes were like long, <coughs> like they got a man's on them. Yeah, it look weird. So like when they can see through you, it's like it's showing the eyes and let them so they can you letting the people around you know they, that you can see through the thing. See what I'm saying? Versions of you. I feel like there are so many actually new things that you have to understand in order to get a sense of what this headset actually <coughs> is and what it does. So I'm gonna break this down into two parts. This video is all about using the Vision Pro. It's everything I've learned from the past week of wearing and getting used to this thing every single day. But I'm also working on a more wide ranging, possibly more existential review video. But let's just start with the more hardware fundamentals, right? Like what is this thing that I'm holding, literally? Apple Vision Pro at its core, well, it is a VR headset. Now, Apple would never say that, and they probably won't like that I'm saying that word. You know, I made an entire video about why they refuse to use those words, and they're calling it spatial computing instead. We'll get there. But the truth is, it's a really, really, really high-end virtual reality headset. It's, it's something we've seen before, right? It's got displays and lenses and speakers and fans and buttons, and this is a form factor. This is a thing that we have seen before. But before I even turn this thing on, there are clearly several things that are a little different about this one. So first of all, it's made of metal. Lots of metal and glass here, which are high quality, but heavy materials, relatively speaking. So there's this precisely machined aluminum frame around the outside. And yes, those are intakes for fans at the bottom and then vents for those fans at the top. On the right side, there's your digital crown that can be pressed in or turned. And then on the other side is just a single larger button. So kind of basically the same two buttons as an Apple Watch. And then when you get a little further back on this band here, these little pods with downward facing grills, these are speakers, which are pointed straight at your ears and work surprisingly well. Though, of course, it also means that people around you can hear a little bit of what you're hearing. There's a little bit of bleed. And I have a lot to say about spatial audio, so stay tuned for that. But the main event is at the front. There is an enormous piece of glass, which, yes, is very easy to fingerprint and smudge. And then behind that thing, there's this outward facing OLED display and a bunch of sensors all the way around, outside facing sensors that go forward, sideways, and straight down. And there's depth sensors, infrared illuminators, LIDAR scanners, and just regular old RGB cameras. All basically just a VR set headset with a glass on the front with a whole bunch of sensors and cameras in it. Crazy. Being processed by an M2 chip and an R1 chip inside this thing. And then maybe the craziest like, part, <laughs> inside the headset, there are a bunch more sensors facing your eyes, tracking your eyes in real time for all the eye control and everything that comes with that. And also then to display a representation of your eyes on the outside of the headset, kinda, we'll get there. But overall, when you put it all together, you get a very well-made, very high-end, but also pretty heavy computer to wear on your face. Uh, so officially, this this headset with this solo knit band, when I weighed it, showed up as 638 grams, which some of you on Twitter have already pointed out is actually slightly less than the plastic MetaQuest Pro. But that Quest Pro also has a lot of battery on the back of your head as a sort of a counterbalance. So the weight distribution is very different. Also, the Quest Pro is not that comfortable anyway. But the point is, this for Apple made the choice of taking the battery 
off of the headset, which means, okay, now there's nothing on the back of your head, so you can wear it and lean up against things, and that might be an upside, but that also now means you have to deal with this cable all the time running up to your head. The fact that you got to put it on, you got to connect the little thing up, and you got a cable running to your pocket or wherever. You lose it, Kai. I ain't see that on Kai. Mm -hmm. That's why when he said he jumped to go dead, he had the batteries connected. And the fact that it's very front weighted now. All of the weight is on the front of your face. You can't even use it without connecting it up? Or is that just how you charge it? Like if it's nah, that's the battery. You, you gotta, uh, I don't know. I, so I, I've seen before that you can actually connect some up that's a continuous power. <laughs> But that's like a battery that you want to go. I don't, I don't really know what actually came with it. Now. So this is the battery, uh, as you saw in the unboxing. If you haven't already seen the unboxing, that just went up. I'll link it below the like button. But this battery is a surprisingly small 3,366 milliamp hours. I say surprisingly small because a normal battery bank of this size, you might expect to be 10, 15, 20,000 milliamp hours. I suspect there's a lot of uh, heat insulation happening here, but it comes with a non-removable four foot cable and a proprietary connector at the end of the cable that will twist and lock to the headset. And so the lock is really solid. It makes sense that it's not just straight USB that could get disconnected easily. Once you connect it, it starts glowing and then it starts booting up and there's even a little Apple logo that displays on the outside screen while it takes, you know, a little under a minute to turn on. So there is no on or off button or switch anywhere. Taking on a or on this headset, on maybe kind of like AirPods Max, something like that. So if you ever take the so headset let's, off let's skip, and put it down, it will enter a standby. Let's skip around and get to the controls, man. Let's get to some interesting. Under USB-C cable. So there are no controllers that come with this headset. Now it does support other input methods that are like game controllers and mouse and keyboard, and those can be incredibly useful. But by default, the primary input method for everyone using the Vision Pro is your eyes and your hands. So the first time you put on this headset, it goes through this calibration process and it's pretty interesting. So the first time you ever put it on, it first adjusts the distance between the lenses, physically moving them inside the headset to match the distance between your eyes. Then it does a sort of a hand scan so it understands so your hands. Weird. And then you like, go through- Imagine walking in the room, you just see somebody sitting on the couch just doing this right here. You gonna think slow. <laughs> What'd you say, turn the thing process of basically looking at a bunch of dots all the way around the screen and then tapping your fingers together to select them. Kind of feels like an eye test or something. And then you're in. So first thing you're gonna notice is you can actually kind of put your hands anywhere as long as the headset can see this. Just your fingers touching together. So there's a lot of pictures of, of people like using a headset with their fingers like out in front of them, pinching like that but you actually don't have to do that. It's such a wide angle because of the sensors facing forward and sideways and down. You can kind of just rest your hand anywhere in front of you in your lap. As long as you pinch like that, it can generally pick it up, which is impressive. So you're pinching to control anywhere in that 180 degree bubble in front of you. And then the digital crown, you hit that once and the app drawer comes up, pretty simple. Doesn't seem that impressive, but this is actually a peek at the first really impressive thing about this headset to me, which is it seems to have incredible spatial positioning lock. That's hard. He see he got the outs in front of him, and then he see through the outs. Like that's his room behind. Like man, it get real, bro. It get real. Let's get right to he talking about this. And that's how it starts. So now you're so in wonder, Apple's new Vision you, OS. Um, I would describe. Like this say when people blur up the screen or put their fingerprints on one if it be blurry mm -mm. it don't no you got because you got to think you actually seeing oh, this inside you're not yeah, looking through yeah, it for yeah, real yeah, yeah, yeah. as kind of similar to ipad os but way more make, glassy and like that means that it's gonna make like it's gonna make what you see look 4k because it ain't even yeah it's super real life so it's gonna so look clear than what your it, them are better than your eyes. So if you wait, so if you wear glasses, then well, it just depends on you far side on this side because it's actually like you put them on this actually a screen right here this far. Yeah. So you may be able to smooth the screen, like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. However you need it. Of course, with the extra dimension of 3D space. So hitting the digital crown will always get the app drawer back in front of you. Yeah. And then simply look at the icon you want and pinch your fingers together to select it and open that app. Scrolling is basically as you'd expect. You just kind of pinch and grab in the air and then pull as if it's on a string and physics let you pull things through the air. 
it's pretty intuitive, it's responsive, it's fluid. Sometimes it's kind of bouncy even. I would say the biggest adjustment is only being able to control exactly what you're looking at. And I don't think people realize how often they're controlling things that they're not exactly looking directly at with other computers and other UIs. But with this, you can look at the button to select it. And if you look at the next thing you're gonna do, you're no longer controlling the button. You have to look exactly where you're trying to interact with things. It takes a few extra brain cycles to remember to always be looking oh exactly at the thing you're oh, controlling. Geez. So when you open a window of a Vision OS app, like any one of the- How did they create that though? That's crazy. I can see your eyes. It's like, I'm looking right, I'm looking at- Like the... them buttons was like close together, bro. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What are you cock eyed? <laughs> what are you looking but like your eyes ain't looking at what you supposed to be looking at? Ooh, you all it. <laughs> you going to be clicking here, but you got to it's look here. It. You talking about look, you can't use You can't, yeah. Dang. Alba, you got to make one for the cock eyed people, man. <laughs> Default Apple apps here. It locks into place. It's floating there. It kind of looks again like an iPad app, but very glassy, like this frosted glass around the UI sort of lets you see through a little bit to the color behind it. And it even sometimes casts a shadow on the ground oh, in the correct hard. Z that's space. Hard. So it really solidifies that it's floating in front of you. All of this makes it feel like the window. The fact that it has a shadow though, you almost, if you, if you wear that too long, you almost be like thinking that's there. Is in the space around you. Then, if you look at the bottom of the window, you get a little bar. You can always just look at that bar and pinch to drag it around. So drag it forward, backward, <clears throat> anywhere you want in X, Y, and Z space, and then let go, and it just stays absolutely locked. And then you can look at either bottom corner to resize to make it bigger or smaller. And then finally, there's a little X at the bottom. You select that, that closes it. So that is the basics of Vision this. OS and just yeah, using an app. Now, I'm this entire right time, by default, and almost any time they can, pass through is on, which means you have the headset on, but you can see with the cameras right through to everything around you. And I think this is where Apple really wants to normalize the term spatial computing because it feels like augmented reality. It feels like you're always able to see the space around you, but technically it's not actually AR because you are still looking at a reconstructed version through a camera feed of the world around you instead of the actual world around you. But Maybe it's all just semantics. I will say this is the best pass through of any VR headset I have ever used. And it's not even that close. Now, again, it's it's so hard to get this through a YouTube video. I, I It does have screen recording built in. So I'm going to try to use that. But imagine putting a headset on and not really. And it's really like we're not even getting the full justification of what we're seeing right now. Like we're just seeing it, him use it through the thing and you record it like imagine seeing this in real life we're putting headphones on and we're looking at the wall and it's just like and you like a projector that you can control <clears throat> but so his crazy. hand looks real though like his hand is real hold on feeling like you're looking at a screen i think his hand fake i think everything i don't know i don't know what's really fake right now oh man i think we're in the matrix <laughs> in with the real world because of the pixel density, because of the 90 hertz refresh rate, and because of the impressive dynamic range of the cameras and the correctly adjusting shutter speed, you, you just almost don't. Cause, you all because stuff do look fake right now. Don't want John to tell you why I said that. He did. Okay. You just say something about. It's like you're looking at a screen. You're looking at a recording, basically. Yeah, you're looking at a a, a, a live recording. Most just yeah. feel like you're looking at the real world, not through a headset. Also, the pass through is so close to real time that I could legitimately interact with all kinds of things. I could catch items flying at me. So he, so he making it seem like he not really seeing. Yeah, so it's a live video. Cause you know, like on live, if I do this and put my hand down, it's gonna be delayed. I'm gonna see myself. Yeah. I even tried playing ping pong. It was easy, no hesitation. So officially the R1 chip is doing all the processing of all this stuff and adjusting the shutter speed for different lighting conditions and always keeping pass through latency under 12 milliseconds, which is the lowest in the industry. But it's, it's really combining that with how close to reality the colors and brightness and everything are that keeps it feeling kind of real. Basically, the only noticeable restriction is super close-up items and objects can get a bit blurry. And then you, you can't quite make out like really small or fine text. So you can't like read an email or a tiny text on your phone in your hand. But you can absolutely 
text people, or read your notifications while keeping the headset on. If you've tried other VR headsets, you know how impressive that is. It's just, it's... So I wonder if, like, I can't read it from right here. So if I put them up close, I, I could just it. Yeah, you ain't gonna be to see. So right now, for we, for us, I just realized, for us to see what he's showing us, he's screen recording the whole thing, and it's showing his world on the screen record, his hand, and the virtual shit on the screen record. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm really good with the tech that exists now for VR headsets. Uh, but you can definitely still take the headset off and be like, oh, it's way brighter in here than I thought it was. Either way, that's all passed through. But if you ever want to fully immerse yourself, I mean, it is a VR headset after all. All you got to do is uh, rotate this digital crown clockwise. Just keep turning it and it will slowly dial your environment more and more into your field of view until you dial it all the way up to fully it's surrounding space. you. So all of the windows you might have had open will still stay stuck where they were, but everything you're doing is just on the moon now. So yeah, there, there's a couple. Imagine. Do y'all think they really went to the moon or did they do this? See them, them fake hands right now. Yeah, because it ain't registering the hands. No. Nah, all environments crazy. Apple has built in here, <clears throat> most of them relaxing scenic locations like in California somewhere, or one really nice one is Mount Hood with a little bit of rain falling. They're not quite photorealistic, but they're just short of photorealistic. Like they're the most realistic digital environments that I've seen. So then- Did this look real or not, bro? This looks super actually real, like. Mm -hmm. The last two big quirks of the UI, control center, so the only way to get to control center is to look up like, and you can't just look up, but you have to physically turn your head up and look at this arrow that appears above you. So once you see that, you select that, and then you get your control center for things like, you know, battery life and notifications, focus modes and screen recording and pairing to a Mac. But the other big quirk is text input. So you might be wondering how does text input work with no physical controllers? Uh, so there's basically three ways to do this. So let's say you're in Safari and you want to go to mkbhd.com. You really want one of those shiny new Chevron hoodies for the rest of winter. Great. How do you do it? So the first way is to literally hunt and peck, poking the keys on the keyboard that appears in the air in front of you. <laughs> so this one is tough because it literally only reacts to your pointer finger on each hand. So you actually can't type fast, like with home row or anything like that. That's how I type. Anyway, I've been, been typing so fast. Not great. The second way, though, I think is actually kind of good. It's at least faster, which is looking at the key you want to interact with and then pinching to select it. So just looking at, looking around the keyboard like this and selecting the keys. And you might be surprised how fast you can type like this if you actually know your way around a keyboard pretty well. I actually prefer this to poking nah, that, the... That might be fine, though. I'll be, I'll be looking at... That's tough. I'll be, be doing that more than anything. Go to the... Boy, that'll be hard, though. Virtual keys, because I at least get a little bit of haptic feedback from my own fingers tapping together. But then in Safari, the last way to do it is literally to just look up at the microphone and say the URL out loud, mkbhd.com. And then it just hears you and goes to the site pretty quick if it's a URL that, you know, you can actually say out loud. So what did he say? <laughs> that what I was going to say though, like mshibisky.com. Mshibisky. Nah, that's not what that says, bro. That's crazy. Somebody, somebody what can wrong. you actually do with this thing? Like now that we know what it is, it's the M2 chip, a computer on your face with the displays and the- Tell us if it's really worth it or not, man. This might be the last little section we watch. Let's see, what, let's see what it do. Lenses inside and all sorts of sensors everywhere. What can it this thing actually do? And I feel like the most common way to phrase that is, what is the killer app? Because that's, we feel like we need some sort of justification to spend three, four thousand dollars on this thing. Like applications made the iPhone what it is as we know it. Like apps made the iPad. So what is the app situation on the Vision Pro? So there are two types of apps on the Vision Pro. Crazy. I don't know if I really ever knew the applications. App was short for application. You came out the womb, so. <laughs> Actually, the first is apps that are built specifically for the Vision Pro to take advantage of its awesome experiences. And there are a few of those right now. 
And then there are all the other apps, which right. basically yeah, are iPhone and iPad apps that happen to be compatible because the developer didn't opt out. And the first kind is way cooler. So these are Apple's stock apps oh, yeah. here that Crazy. come with the Vision Pro. And so these are all, of course, made just for Vision Pro. So they're gonna have stuff that takes full advantage of what this thing is capable of. Apple Music is a pretty classic one. Like it has all the same functionality of any other Apple Music app, but in this super glassy frosted window and shows the colors of whatever's behind it. And you have the sort of sorting menu on the left-hand side instead of across the bottom. That's the basic layout. Same thing with the Notes app and the Settings app. Very glassy, almost looking like an iPad app in the air, just rebuilt with this new material design. And then there's the media apps. So Apple TV and Disney Plus, they both come pre-installed, which they have built entire environments inside of them for watching media. And there's even a small collection of videos on the Apple TV app that are shot on a new proprietary format specifically for Vision Pro. So it, it drops you into a space with a full 180 degree video and. Yeah, wait till the whole movie just start coming out and you in the movie like, bro, running at you with a horse. And you like, oh, you look oh, around and make that this 3D. way too. This way. Ooh, they put you in a movie. That's gonna be crazy. Folks Alicia like, Keys walks right up to you and starts singing right to your face. It's crazy. There's also the Photos app, which will let That'd you look hard. at like panoramic photos, for example, in this fully immersive view. So you can blow them up to full screen and then it gives you a bit of a parallax effect around the edges. So it feels like you're like looking into a window of your own it's photo great. and looking around. It's kind of incredible. And then there's also some other really fun third-party apps that I've tried that were built ahead of time. So Sky Guide, this is a good one. You can look around a real representation of the sky around you where any of the you know constellations would normally be. You can look at it a little longer and it'll pop it out. You can pull it out of the sky to get more information about it. It's a pretty great idea. There's another one called Jig Space which is, it's a sick app. I don't know if I'd ever use it, but basically it lets you load 3D models really? into the space you're in and mess around with them, take them apart, view them in actual size. And this something. really takes advantage of how good the placement lock is on the Vision Pro. And you know, you can walk around and really gets you a better understanding of the scale of things that you don't get to see. No, this is like some Iron Man stuff here. Right, bro. He just, that man just took apart. He took the part out of the car to examine it. Ain't no way. You can decide if you want a car now, boy. You ain't, what is it, 3,500? You can see if you want the car. Keynote is another funny yeah, one. Dope. So you can, of course, go through and edit a keynote just like normal if you want to. But then they've built this whole environment for practicing your presentation skills. So you press that and it says, oh, would you like to go to a mm. conference room or the literal Steve Jobs Theater? So you can rehearse talking no. to your audience with your keynote slides behind you, <laughs> it is genuinely incredibly immersive. And there's already a bunch more apps like this in the app store already at launch it that are specifically it. built yeah. for Vision Pro. So they'll take advantage of its. Yeah, man, this is crazy. Is you, is you copying? Let me see if we got anything more interesting in here. The killer app, what's that? The killer app. Hey, were you playing 2K? He watching the game, look like this is he doing right here. It's razor sharp. Like I could totally watch YouTube videos like this, but you will definitely be missing like the features of having the dedicated app like offline video. Honestly, to me, the killer app of the Vision Pro isn't just an app, it's actually the ecosystem. And we knew this was coming, but the second you log into a Vision Pro with your Apple ID, immediately it starts pulling all the services and all the stuff that you're used to from all the other Apple devices you already have. And I said this before the Vision Pro was announced, I was like, this is the most obvious strategy for Apple because there are lots of people out there who have never considered buying. Yeah, so let, let, one more, one more. Let's look at this one right quick. Oh, look at that. Middle here, maybe you're editing or doing some work on the Mac app and work. Even if it is a desktop, the keyboard and the trackpad. Okay, hit that arrow. And then there's this little icon to become my Mac's virtual display. So I click that and then pick my Mac and it pretty much instantly, it actually blacks out the display of my Mac and then turns that display into a 4K window inside of the headset. So now my keyboard and trackpad still work. Even if it is a desktop, the keyboard and the trackpad still control everything. And you can continue using it just like a normal life, computer, but with the ability to make your new 4K monitor 
as but we just know y'all watch Iron Man plenty of time. You seen him doing this exact stuff, bro. Now this is what they doing in real big life. or as small or close or far away as you want, which is super sick. And Man, then the bonus is you can still open up and place other Vision what? Pro apps around your Mac computer. <laughs> so like you can have your Mac in the middle here. Why Maybe you're just, editing or doing some work walk, on the Mac yeah, walk behind the, yeah, walk behind the thing. app. And then you have a Safari window or, or messages or whatever else you want. Right next to it, around it. And then your keyboard and trackpad can move seamlessly between them all to control all of them. This to me, as a Mac user, the ease of use for setup to make this happen, this feels like the biggest game it's changer. Probably, like the it's most the best, quickest way you can set up a MacBook and have multiple you don't need no you don't need no mod. All you need is a sit your your, your uh what do you call it? Apple Vision Pro right there. Boom. Get on your MacBook, put your screens there, you in there going crazy, man. Telling Mon future Get what? monitors cheaper and with monitoring I do my plug it up. Stick feeling you know, use of this headset to me, especially on a plane. Oh my god, I can't tell you how many times I've had an awkward conversation because, like, I'm editing a video on the plane. The person next to me sees I'm editing a video of myself, and it's kind of weird and hard to explain. But I'm picturing putting the headset on, the display blacks out, but now I can do all the editing I want, and I can make the screen as big as I want. So I've really enjoyed using that feature. Again, the biggest challenge, though, is still remembering to look exactly at the thing you want to control. So aside from typing on the real keyboard on whatever window is open, if you want to control something, you have to be looking at it. it again, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you try it, you'll see what I mean. And then also. You got nothing else in there? It's pretty, I mean, if y'all want to go watch the whole thing, he talking about the eye, the persona, just the part where we just seen with Kai, as y'all seen with Kai did it, you can record yourself. This is how they do it right here. I'll show y'all how they do that. Let's look at how they do that. <clears throat> Which is called your persona. And it looks like this. So to get those eyes on the outside of the Vision Pro headset, you have to do something called registering your persona. This is how it creates the digital version of you that includes your eyes that will show up here. So let's do that now. It's actually kind of a cool process. So I'm gonna put it on and hopefully the screen recording works so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'll hit the digital crown. I'm gonna to go to settings and you can do this when you first set it up, but I'm going to persona and I'm gonna hit get started. So let's refine my hands real quick. Captures, this is capturing detail from the front of the headset of the hands in front of me. Once it's done with that, it's gonna ask me to take it off. So, this is when how you're it ready, goes. hold Apple Vision Pro at eye level. Keep your arms and shoulders relaxed. Align your entire face within the frame. My face shows up like Face ID. Yeah, them robots coming, boy. <laughs> no, for real. Cause that thing right there ain't need, don't need nothing but a body. <laughs> what you say? Slowly turn your head to the right. Now slowly turn your head to the left. Now, tilt your head up. Then, tilt your head down. You know this you know what remind me of right now? Wally. <laughs> you know what it looked like. Next, like a mini let's of... capture your facial expressions. Smile with your mouth closed. <laughs> then, make a big smile with your teeth showing. Now, yeah. raise your eyebrows. Close your eyes for a moment. Capture complete. Put Vision Pro back on to continue. This is crazy, man. This is really crazy. I will do that. So now I have a menu that says creating persona. And it says it's in beta. And now there's there's my persona right there. Crazy. Kind of uncanny. Of the, the hair is a little bit different, but the <clears throat> face. <clears throat> wow. Wow, okay. So there's different lighting. You can choose it to always be in studio lighting and always be in contour lighting. I'll just leave it at natural and hit next. You can change the color temperature of your skin tone. You go to fade time. Go cool to, fade time. to warm. I think I'm around there. 
don't see that oh. Marquez. Now wait, so now, Brian, do you oh. see this? Now I can see that Marquez. And then on top of that, spatial audio here is incredibly well-developed, so, so again, you're on the call, the voice of the person to the right comes from the right side, the voice of the person to the left comes from the left, but also, you can just pick up and move the window around, and that angle will match where the people are in the room and where their sound and video comes from. If I put you on the other side of the room, it sounds like they're further away. And if I turn up the environment and bring them into like the moon or some other 3D space, it actually sounds much more like I'm in a gigantic space with no echo versus in the actual room. It's all very subtle, but very well considered. So once you're in this a while, you start to notice all these, these little this thing is crazy. So you just seen a, 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 a quick synopsis of this whole video. If you want to go watch it, go check them out. This is using the Apple Bro. Vision Pro. What it's actually like. I want y'all to comment <clears throat> down below right now. Are you, would you copy? Yes or no? So would you copy? Would you copy? Yes or no? For $3,500, would you copy? <clears throat> to me, will I copy? Probably not. I'd say let's just take the price out of it. Like if it was who wouldn't copy? Like though? who wouldn't copy? You who mean? wouldn't copy? It's an L product. You gotta copy for cheap. Oh but I'm God. definitely going to the Apple Store and trying this though. But lying probably out the door trying to try it, but I'm going there you soon to try it. You ain't lying. <clears throat> no pun intended. No, for real. This thing crazy. This is different. This is this is this. We in the future. Oh, we here. I'm in the present, but. <laughs> Yeah, man. That's the Apple Vision Pro. Don't forget to comment down below if you copying or not. Regardless of the price. Would you cop it or not? I'm copying for sure. For that 3500 I ain't copying. But regardless of the price, I gotta go. I got to see what it's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, man. Don't forget. Stay out. Stay out.